Hi, I'm Dave Wilson from HGANet, and I'd like to tell you about some software we've been developing in the Manticore project called OpenNAS. HGANet is the internet provider for the academic institutions in Ireland, and one of the problems that we would like to solve is the sheer amount of equipment that we're putting on site at each client. What we have at the moment is we usually put two routers on each site, one primary and one for backup, and then two switches as well. Um, again, primary and backup, because we'd like to provide layer two services as well as layer three. And what we would like to be able to do is take those routers off the site and aggregate them in some way closer to our core. And we thought we might be able to solve this with virtualization. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I have two physical routers set up at the moment, one in Dublin city centre in a test lab and the other in our data centre in Parkwest. We're going to create two logical routers and then we're going to create the connectivity between them. Uh, there's going to be two connections upstream, there's going to be a connection in between for failover and two connections to the local LAN which represents the client. So let me show you our graphical user interface. This is the first thing you see when you go to log into the GUI. Our expectation is that people will either adapt this GUI or develop their own using the RESTful API uh, in order to do something that's more appropriate for their particular use case. And the whole thing is underpinned by a command line interface. But let me show you the overview now. If I log in as the NOC user, I have a number of choices for the different use cases I want to fulfill here. And in this video, I'm going to concentrate on the virtual CPE for a single provider. Let's go ahead with that. The first thing we see, this is set up in advance, is a overview of the hardware, that, uh, the physical hardware that's going to be used to uh, create this network. And what we have is a uh, single core router in this case, which is providing the upstream connections. And then we're going to make two logical routers on two different physical routers in different data centers, which are going to provide the actual um, uh, virtual CPE. These are connected by a bandwidth on demand system, and then there is a connection downstream to the client. So let's get to it. Um, what we're going to do now is configure an instance of a virtual CPE. And the first thing we have is um, the two WAN connections to the upstream. Now, the tool is smart enough to suggest particular VLANs and particular IP addresses to use here. For the particular setup we have in our lab, I'm going to configure um, VLANs manually. Uh, but where in, in production we would expect that there would be a range of VLANs available for the tool and it would progress through them as, um, uh, as required. The second step then is to configure the routing for the virtual CPE. Now we have the approach in OpenNAS that it should be possible to specify everything you need to specify once and only once so to avoid duplication and to avoid conflicts where that duplication happens. So here in our test setup, we have an AS number configured for the client, we have an AS number configured for the, the upstream, and we have a range of IP addresses which are assigned to the client. That's all very well. Um, we already know the upstream links, so we don't need to give that extra information twice to configure BGP. But if we come then to the underlying topology, um, we have loopback interfaces, which we're configuring on each of the logical routers. The primary is on the left and the backup is on the right. And as well as the loopback interfaces, we've already configured the upstream interfaces. And now we also configure the downstream interfaces. Again, I have particular VLANs, which I'm um, reserving inside our lab for this purpose. So I manually configure them here. And this is where if we go back to the diagram that I showed earlier of the um, connections downstream and between the two routers, we have the two downstream connections, which are shown on the far left and the far right. And we have a single connection in between the two routers called inter here, which is in the center. And how those are created is through a bandwidth on demand system. OpenNAS isn't going to configure these links itself. It's not going to tell it into switches and set them up. We're going to use our existing provisioning system, um, which is interdomain, and simply request the circuits between the, the points through which these routers are connected. Now that's all very well from the provider side, and um, that gives us the information we need to have and the flexibility we need to have available in order to configure a connection to the uh, for the client. The client, however, has their own needs, and they're going to have things that they need to configure. For example, they might need to configure VRP on the two downstream links, and so you need to be able to assign an IP address from the range for that. Uh, we also want to be able to name this network, of course, and you should also be able to configure the IGP um, that's used inside the client's network, not on the provider in this case, but these are a part of the client's network. 
And the really interesting thing we get here is because we see the network as a set of resources, we can now perform operations on the entire network instead of simply individual links or individual interfaces. So we've already provided all the information we need in order to configure OSPF. We know what the interfaces are and we know what the links are. Uh, so we can simply get this down to on or off. We also have an interface here in this particular GUI for applying firewall rules. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, so why do that in this way? Well, there's three problems we're trying to solve here. The first is the initial cost of the equipment. If we can aggregate the equipment centrally, instead of having to buy an extra device for every single client and every single site, uh, then that reduces obviously the initial cost that we have to pay. The second is ongoing maintenance, which is usually a proportion of the initial cost, and that's solved in the same way. The third problem is the operational complexity of having all this equipment around the place. That is not solved on its own by virtualization, because your network is still just as complex. So what can we do about that? Our approach then is that you need to be able to not just virtualize your network, but also automate the provisioning. We were convinced of this in HGNet when we set up our point-to-point -point Ethernet network with a provisioning system. And what we found was that it wasn't just that change control was easier because we had more confidence in what the tool would do, but inventory and monitoring were something we could set up automatically and not have to worry about people forgetting to do so. But best of all, we found we were able to make an API and give access to other networks to the properly authorized and properly authenticated parts of our network that we wanted them to have access to. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could bring all these benefits to layer three. And that's why we got involved in building the OpenLAS tool. What we have in the tool then is we make from this framework a provisioning system for logical routers. It's an open source framework. There's a command line interface as well as a GUI I just showed you. But best of all, it's integrated with the bandwidth on demand network that has used inside JAON. This lets us take the physical infrastructure that we have and manage it using the OpenNAS platform and we interact with that either through the command line interface or through the GUI which is developed upon the API. So let's go back to the tool and see how it went. As you can see, the network has been created successfully. We have the infrastructure in place, the circuits that we requested were completed, and the logical routers that we requested were set up. The routing is now in place and working and we have the topology that we wanted. And on the left we see our list of virtual CPE networks, of which we have one um, called Dave W, and we can now interact with it. The knocker can change it, they can update the IP addresses if they wish, and of course they can shut it down. However, that's not all there is to it. We also have the uh, problem to solve where the client has particular settings that they need to be able to change on the network. There are some things that the client must be able to change that the provider has no business changing, such as the internal structure of the client's own network. So let me log out as the NOC user here and log back in as an entirely different user. This is a user which represents the client and they also have uh, access to their own virtual CPE and their own network with a more limited set of operations that they can perform. Here we see they have visibility of the um, uh, parts of the network that are relating to the upstream and which are set by the ISP, but they have both visibility and full control over those parts which the ISP doesn't need to worry about or doesn't need to change, but which are most relevant to the parts of the client network. In this case, on this particular GUI, they can change their um, IGP, they can change their, their virtual IP address for the VROP network, and of course they can control their firewall filters. And uh, if I log back out and log back in as the NOC, um, the user can't interact with other virtual CPE, and of course they can't just delete their own connection. However, that's an operation that is available to the NOC. And that is the OpenS tool. Thank you very much for watching.